what supplements are your favorite? Um, the ones that people probably don't know about. Or vitamin like what K. are you, yeah, what are you using? What do you, yeah, tell me, give us. Yeah, that. even my kids do vitamin K2 and they have since basically we adopted them. It's probably the most underutilized unknown vitamin, vitamin K2. It's not K1. Um, it helps get calci calcium into the bones where it's needed. Um, and most of your bones are built before you're age 18. So if you think about your kids, are they eating a lot of protein? Because that's like the most important. Your bones are like mineralized protein. Yeah. That's what they are. Um, I actually had, it's so cool. I was running the beach like three mornings ago and this woman, it was still dark out and she's like, Maria Emmerich. And I'm like, oh, geez. You know, I kind of looked like a drowned rat. I was all wet. And she's, I said, yes. And she goes, oh, you changed my life. And she was like, I can't believe it's you. And she was telling me how she was trying to find health. And what she did was extended fasting. And when she was doing extended fasting, she got diagnosed with osteopenia, not just or osteoporosis, the, you know, not just osteopenia, osteoporosis. And so she still wanted to find health, but we taught her like our protein sparing ways. And then she reversed her osteoporosis and still lost weight and felt great. But anyway, vitamin K2, magnesium, um, gosh, it just really depends on, you know, yeah. what your issues are, but, but you know, vitamin K2 and magnesium are probably something. And, you know, knowing what your vitamin D levels are is really helpful too. For sure. Um, thoughts on Ozempic? <laughs> um, I did a whole YouTube video about the new miracle weight one. loss drug. Yeah. And, um, I, you know, it's interesting because I, I have people in my life that have are food addicts and it's helping with addiction in general. However, sure. yeah. However, um, when you are taking something like that, your appetite is so low that you're most likely not going to reach towards protein. It almost makes you, ugh, I don't want to eat that. You know, oh, like interesting. When you're, you're when turned you're off by it, like almost like when you're pregnant or something. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And that's going to cause. So when you look at the studies, when people lose weight naturally, they lose about, I don't know if it's like 25% of their muscle is lost when they lose weight. And this is why I'm so passionate about the protein sparing diet because you barely lose any pro muscle mass, if any, when you're losing fat. But when you're on Ozempic, it's like 50% of your yeah. weight loss is muscle. And so why I don't think that's helping with like insulin resistance or type two diabetes, that's what it's claiming it's helps with. But you, when you're losing weight, you want to maintain your muscle because that gives your place, your body more places for glucose to go. And if you just lose a bunch of muscle, you're going to go off the medication eventually. Cause it's like a thousand dollars a month. And yeah. when you get off of it, um, your type two diabetes is going to be worse because you lost a bunch of muscle and you're not going to be as strong. Like the long-term effects are first of all, not hundred percent known, but what we do know is, is it really bad? Yeah. Interesting. Um, okay. We've talked a lot of the protein sparing diet. It's, can you summarize it for me? Cause I'm still just like confused on what it means. Um, then, protein sparing is a, you know, how do you say like a, you know, a high protein or moderate adequate protein diet. Are we talking like one gram per pound of body weight type yeah. target? Okay. Yeah. Um, or like ideal body weight. Cause if you're 500 pounds, you don't want yeah. 500. Okay. Pounds. Okay. Um, so of your ideal body weight and then very low fat, like 20 to 30 grams of fat and, you know, 10 grams of carbs. Uh, my calculator will give you your protein sparing macros if you want them. Um, you just have to say you want those in addition because protein sparing is not something you do every day. It's maximum three days a week, but you can do it one day a week. It's not really for someone who's 10 pounds overweight because you don't have a lot of storage on your body yeah. already and you're going to be miserably hungry. Yeah. But when you do have, you know, 50, a hundred pounds, 50, yeah, hundred pounds to lose, you will not be hungry. You're tapping into your body fat. Most people feel so good on protein sparing days. They say, can I do this like every day this week? And like, no, you can't. You're like, no, got it. No, okay. Then what about like 800 calories? Okay. Got okay. it. Got it. So this is a tool you use in the short term, more likely when you have extreme weight to yes. lose. Instead of extended fasting. Instead got of it. 
Yeah. I see. Okay. And then what about the five to 10 pound people? What do they do? Five to um, 10 pounds. From those. I, I give them their proper macros. Um, their, the proper keto macros with, you know, really good protein amounts. Um, you know, probably more of a moderate fat, you know, low carbohydrate. And I say dairy and nut free, um, sleep at least eight hours. It's ideal to cut out all coffee for many, many reasons, um, including weight loss. But uh, yeah, there's- Kelly a- Lebeck says that too. The first thing she does, she works with a lot of, I don't know if you know Kelly, she's great. She's like protein, fat, fiber, and greens, but you would love her. She's a close friend of mine. She works with a lot of folks too. And she says some, some like most of the time, the first thing she does is like, no caffeine. It's, it's very what hard. What about matcha? Do I need to cut out my matcha? Um, I have not seen any studies showing this, um, and I've not had any clients switch to that to see if it helps, but I've had people go from regular coffee to decaf and it's still just as bad. And then as soon as they cut the decaf out, and I don't recommend decaf coffee because it's made with a chlorinated filtration process, yeah, so but they'll tough. cut the, they'll cut the, the decaf out and boom, like five pounds in a week. And that's the only thing that's changed. That's crazy. 